Pfizer-BioNTech, the first of the vaccines to be approved for use in Canada. There is breaking news on that vaccine. This morning, the company has submitted new data to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, which they say demonstrates that their vaccine is stable when it's stored at more normal refrigeration temperatures, minus 25 to minus 15, as opposed to the minus 75, minus 80, that we think of it in the ultra low temperature freezers. I'm gonna give you some more details on all of this, but we've been bringing you this breaking news and Dr. Isaac Bogosh uh, is with us, good enough to bring us uh, some reaction to it. Dr. Bogosh, an infectious disease specialist at Toronto General and also on uh, Ontario's Vaccine Task Force. Good morning, Dr. Bogosh. Thank you for jumping in the chair. So um, Pfizer-BioNTech submitting data to the FDA. Their vaccine, they say, you can store it for up to two weeks in more pharmaceutical refrigerators and freezers. Your reaction to that number one? Yeah, this is this is fantastic. I mean, uh, we know currently the the standard is to store this in a minus eighty degree freezer, and yeah, we have minus eighty degree freezers in Canada, and of course they exist worldwide. And you can use dry ice to keep this cold when it's in transit from point A to point B. But that's a rather difficult cold chain. It's not an impossible cold chain. It's just a rather difficult cold chain. If there is approval to store this vaccine in a minus 20 degrees Celsius freezer for a two-week period of time, it just makes the distribution efforts so much easier. Minus 20 freezers are way more plentiful. Uh, many pharmacies will have them. Distribution centers have them. Uh, it just means that it's much, much, much easier to distribute, and it would take uh, you know, behind the scenes a significant burden off of a lot of the uh, groups that are kind of trying to distribute this, not just, of course, here in Canada, but worldwide. So this would be a very, very welcome change if it's approved. We were talking, we've been talking throughout about how this is, this cold storage, ultra cold storage, a limitation in getting the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine across the country. And indeed, in, in the territories and the remote areas, they've had to go solely with Moderna as a result of this. So as you say, this would make it so much more accessible. Um, the release that's come out from Pfizer-BioNTech says the data will be submitted to global regulatory agencies within the next few weeks. So Dr. Bogosh, literally seconds ago, CBC News reaching out to Pfizer Canada to find out what the status is here. And the statement coming in from Pfizer Canada, we have not yet made this request in Canada, but we intend to submit the data to Health Canada in the coming weeks. Specific timelines remain to be determined. So yeah. obviously this is something they want to have Canada look at as well and then change the guidelines here. Yeah, and that would be uh, welcome. Like, for example, right now, uh, you know, for example, Pfizer was moved to long-term care facilities, for example, in Ontario. It just means that it was harder to do, right? You had to pre-fill syringes, you have to store it at a very central location, and you have a sort of a hub-and-spoke type of approach to, uh, to distributing this vaccine. Currently, you'd imagine using a vaccine like this in, uh, for example, a mass vaccine site where you bring people to the vaccine rather bringing the vaccine to the people. But if you can really store it in a minus 20 degrees Celsius freezer for a couple of weeks at a time, you can imagine sending this to you know pharmacies all over the country and having them store it in pharmacies uh, and then you know thawing and administering it in pharmacies with far greater ease than if we had the uh, minus 80 degree storage. So you might see some of the programs mobilize this more and bring the vaccine to the people rather than bringing people to the vaccine for this particular product. Having said that, we also have Moderna, which uh, is a much more stable uh, product and you can mobilize that easier as well. So it'd be great. You have, you, we just have more, more vaccines that you can move about the country a lot easier. It, it would just really help with a vaccine effort in Canada, for sure. More choices. I have a question. This is this may be a bit out of left field, but since we're talking about Pfizer, uh, U.S. President Joe Biden going to be touring the Pfizer plant in Kalamazoo, Michigan today. And there are media reports that Prime Minister Trudeau has spoken to President Biden about shipping doses from that plant up to Canada because Canada's supply of Pfizer currently comes from, from Europe, from Brussels. Is there any... any that has not been confirmed, incidentally, by the PMO. But is there any talk in vaccine circles, in healthcare circles, about getting 
doses up from Kalamazoo, whether it's possible, whether it would be de desirable at all? It certainly would be desirable. I'm not quite sure how far along they are in any talks like this, but currently our Pfizer vaccines are uh, produced in Belgium, sent to the United States, and then trucked up to uh, to Canada. So uh, we're getting our Pfizer vaccines from, from, from Belgium. And of course, you've got that plant in Kalamazoo that producing Pfizer for the United States. They're not sending us vaccine for that. And, you, you know, you could shoot a hockey puck from Kalamazoo and hit Ontario. Like, it would be wonderful and easier to get Pfizer from the Kalamazoo plant. And certainly they're, you know, vaccinating north of 2 million people per day in the United States. They certainly have a lot of vaccinations. I mean, it would be wonderful if uh, they'd share with their friendly neighbor to the north. But uh, hopefully there's some softening of those stances there. And, and I'd be very curious to see how those meetings between uh, our, our prime minister and the U.S. president go. It is something to watch today as a tours, and of course they're both involved in the G7 summit where vaccine will come up as well, vaccine equity globally. I want to get your, your thoughts, if we could, with you, Dr. Bogosh. In just about five minutes, we're going to be going to Ottawa Live for the latest federal modeling, the projections for cases and trend lines for the coronavirus nationally. And these will be the first projections, the first data since the variants arrived on the scene nationally. What do you think we should be watching for? I think we're going to see more of the same. They're probably going to discuss, you know, what happens if we open up too early or too quickly and, and, and ignore uh, public health measures. And we'll probably see a worst case scenario. We'll probably see a middle of the road current uh, scenario based on if we keep doing what we're doing now. And then we'll likely see a best case scenario um, where if we manage to tighten up even further what what the uh, what the outlook could perhaps look like, especially accounting for the variants of concern, especially the one from the United Kingdom that emerged first in the United Kingdom, the B117 variant, which we know is more transmissible. I wouldn't be surprised if we see, for example, worst case scenarios of you know, pretty steep curves upward. We've seen those uh, projections before at the provincial level. We've seen those projections in European countries. And I think it, we, we see the exact same projections here in Canada, where if you let your guard down, if you don't have any public health measures, you let people interact with others more, more readily, you know, this is a, a variant of concern that can take off very quickly in communities. We know it's got a foothold here in Canada. It's spreading here in Canada. We've got to do everything we can to keep the virus, including the variants of concern, under control. We're headed in that perfect trajectory downward. And we just might need to work a bit harder to keep that trajectory headed in the downward direction. Dr. Bogosh, thank you for the breaking news reaction this morning. We'll look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday. See you then. Have a great day. Thank you. Well.